the job market is quite fierce. To stand out, you need a good and strong portfolio website. And so when Hostinger reached out to sponsor this video, I thought it would be a great opportunity to create a tutorial showing you step-by-step -step how to create a portfolio website using the Hugo Static Site Generator, which will deploy to Hostinger Hosting Services. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So let's start by signing up for a web hosting account using Hostinger. So you can go to hostinger.com slash data professor. And you could go ahead and click on the get started button. So let's take a look at some of the web hosting features. So for $2.99 a month, you're going to get free SSL, which will encrypt your SSL certificate. You're going to get a free domain name, but this requires that you sign up for a 12, 24, or 48 month hosting plan. You could get free email up to 100 domain-based email addresses. So for example, if you have registered for something like supercoolwebsite.com, then you could create a new email to be your name at supercoolwebsite.com. And aside from that, you'll also get up optimized support for WordPress and several other content management system for creating your website. And then here are some of the technical specs of the web hosting service. So it gives you support for building over 100 websites and more than and 100 gigabytes of SSD storage. And the great thing is that it provides you with free weekly backups of the data. And there's unlimited amount of traffic for your websites. And so to register, go ahead and click on the select button. And so let's take a look at some of the plans that are provided here. So there's one month, 12 months, 24 months, and also 48 months plan. And you'll notice here that for 12, 24, and 48 months, you're going to pay $2.99 a month. And as mentioned previously, you're also going to get a free domain name. So make a selection of your choice here. And let's scroll down. So you're going to see that you're going to save over $432. And then you're going to pay $143.52 for four years of hosting services. And remember that you could host 100 websites if you like. And you could create your account by typing in your email address. Or you could also sign in using Google, Facebook, or GitHub. And then you select your own payment plans here. And then you'll notice that you get 75% discount. And you can see here that it's asking for a coupon code. And if you click on it, you could type in data professor, click on the add button, and then you're going to get an additional $10 off. So that will bring your discount to 77%. And so you're gonna pay $10 less at $133 for four years of web hosting services. So this will average less than $2.99 a month. So the coupon code is data professor, and I'll provide mention of this in the video description. So we wanna start by logging in. And you could use Google account to log in. Now we can see that the premium shared hosting is currently pending setup. And go ahead and click on setup, click on start now, scroll down, click on myself. And here we're going to go ahead and click on the portfolio. So we're going to create new website and we're going to say that we're a beginner but have some experience. And here we're going to select the platform and you could try out WordPress but later in the video we're going to actually use Hugo. So if you have already decided to use Hugo you could go ahead and click on skip. I will start from scratch. Otherwise, you can try out the WordPress system. And you can see here that there's several supported content management systems, which when you install directly from Hostinger, it will allow you to create various 
types of websites using these content management system. And so here we're going to go ahead and select the WordPress and then we're going to enter our administrator email and then you want to enter your password and after doing so hit on continue and then it'll allow you to select the template that you would like to try out. So before actually using Hugo to build the portfolio website, we're going to try out the template provided by the WordPress system. And in doing so, it's actually a great idea to see an example website that has already been pre-configured with all the contents ready to go so that we could see the website layout on our registered domain name. So here we're going to select claim a free domain, which was provided when signing up for the Hostinger web hosting plan. You could also buy a new domain or you could also plug in an existing domain. So here we're going to click claim a free domain and we're going to make a decision on the domain name to use. So apparently Channon.net is not available. So let's try out the .tech domain name. So it'll be Channon.tech and then we'll click on the search button and the domain name is available. So hit on continue. And so this will provide us a summary. And if we're okay with this, then click on the finish setup. And then from here on, you wanna fill in your own personal information. And after entering all of your information, you want to click on finish registration and proceed further. And so it's initializing setup. Let's see if our preview website is ready. All right. And so this is the preview website using the template that we have selected from the WordPress system. So don't worry if you don't want to use WordPress because we're going to delete it in just a moment, but we're just using WordPress here in order to get a glimpse of the actual domain name in action. And so it might take some time before the contents of the WordPress will be served to the new domain name, Chenin.tech. So this could be anywhere between a few hours to even less than 24 hours. So in the meantime, you could proceed to building the Hugo portfolio website, which we're going to cover in the next segment of this tutorial video. So here we're just checking out the configurations and settings of the domain and of the web hosting. But if you don't want to get your hands dirty into coding the website using Hugo Static Site Generator, then WordPress is also a great option because it is a no code solution, meaning that you could just point and click and you get what you want. And you can see here that Hostinger provides several tutorial videos on how you could get started in using WordPress. And there's actually a Hostinger Academy as well. So you could also feel free to check out these tutorial videos. So we can see that the domain is not yet pointing to the web hosting service. Because we had already registered the domain name directly from Hostinger, there's no need to point the domain DNS to the web hosting service because that has already been taken care of. So we cannot click on the manage button because the domain name is not yet pointing to the web hosting service. 
So that might take a few hours. Let's check out the file manager. And you're going to see here some folders belong to the domains and the WP belongs to the WordPress. And the public HTML here will serve the web pages that belongs to the chanin.tech domain name. Let's see if the actual chanin.tech is ready. And it's not yet ready. So what you could do is after logging in, you could click on the manage website and then you could check out the WordPress installation by clicking on website. And then here we're going to delete it. So deleting takes only a few seconds to do so. And we're back to the hosting account. And here we could see that WordPress is not installed. It's a great thing because we had already deleted. And under the hosting tab, which you could click on from the top panel, and then you could scroll down and then you want to find the file manager. And there's two versions, the beta version and the more stable version. Let's go ahead and click on the public HTML folder which at the moment only has contents for the domain chenin.tech because we only have one domain name registered under this account. So if we have more than one domain name, then you're going to see several subfolders in the domain folder. So here's the default.php, which will be served by default to the chenin.tech domain name. And so we could either delete or we could also rename the file so that it won't be served. In this tutorial, we're going to use the open source static site generator called Hugo for creating our portfolio website. And the theme that we're going to use is called paper mod. And let's have a look. And let's take a look at the demo right here, example site. And the link is provided here. So all of the files used to create a demo is provided here. And so let's go ahead and click here. And so this is an example of the paper mod website that we're going to be using in this tutorial. So the great thing about this theme is that it's very clean and minimal. On the top left hand corner here, you could click on the activation of the light or the dark theme here. Just click on it and it activates or deactivate the light and the dark theme. And let's say if we click on an article here, it provides the table of contents at the top here, which could be minimized. And then it provides all of the headings in a very clear to see and read. And it's very friendly for embedding code snippets into your blogs or articles on the portfolio website. So this would be a great way for you to share your blog posts, your writings on your portfolio website, as well as showcase examples from your data science projects, the models that you have built, and explanatory about the importance and the results from your projects, which constitutes your portfolio of data science projects. So perhaps in a future video, I will cover about the topic of how you could select a machine learning project to do or a data science project to do from scratch using your existing domain knowledge, which you could work on in order to establish your portfolio of data science projects or machine learning projects that you could use for future employment. And so let's head over back to the Hugo website and let's click here on the quick start. So very first thing is you want to install Hugo onto your computer. And for Mac users, you could either use the brew or the port. 
Personally, I used Brew to install Hugo into my computer. And what I did was here, go to the terminal and just type in Brew install Hugo. And then hit on enter. And then after that, it will be installed into your computer. So if you don't already have Brew, you want to install Brew first. Let me show you. Is it brew.sh? It is. So you could install Brew by copying this line of code here and then pasting it into your terminal. And then afterwards, after it is installed, you could install various packages from within the terminal. You could use Brew install and then the name of the package that you want to install. So it works very much similar to the app get install from Ubuntu. So for those of you who are not sure whether you have brew installed on your computer, you could just type in brew. And if you see something coming out like this, then it means that you have brew installed already. Or if you're unsure whether you already have Hugo, you just type in Hugo and you should see something coming up like this. You could also type in Hugo version in order to figure out the version number of the Hugo on your machine. And here I have version 0.97.3. And for those of you who are using Windows, you could click here, see install if you're running Windows. And it provides you with a lot of information on how you could install Hugo using the Chocolaty package management. So it works very similar to Brew and to AppGet from Ubuntu. So you could also check out this website for installing it or even scoop. But if you prefer not to install these package managements onto your computer, there is another way. And the other way is to go to the Hugo releases, like here. So I'll provide you a link directly to this Hugo release page. And then you could see that there's actually version 0.98 that has been updated. And if you scroll down a bit, you're going to see all of the binary versions of this Hugo package. So if you're on Linux, you could use, for example, this one, 64-bit, if you're on a Debian-based distribution of Linux. If you are on a Mac, you could use this one, Mac OS, 64-bit. If you are on a Windows, depending on whether you have 32-bit Windows or 64-bit installed, you could use either one of this. And then you could just unzip it and then use the hugo.exe or the hugo binary file which is inside the zipped file so let me show you let's click on here and it's going to download i'm downloading the os x 64 bits and we have it here let's go to the downloads folder and then it's Hugo 0.98. Now S, so notice here we have Hugo. So t type in point or period slash Hugo. And then, okay, I think it came up with this security thing. Let me first go to system preference, go to security and privacy. And you can see here that by default, it is being blocked. So I want to click on allow. And I'll try again. And I'll click on open. All right, and now it works. Okay, and I could type in Hugo version. And then I can see that it is version 0 0.98. So I can use Hugo directly from this binary file without even installing it onto my computer. But note that you need to have this inside the working directory in order for it to work. Or you could save it into your environment path. All right, and so let's head over to the paper mod. And so let's take a look at how you could install paper mod now that you already have Hugo installed on your computer. Scroll down. And then there's an installation wiki here. So let's click on it. And you can see that there are three methods for installing 
paper mod theme. So here it says to do the following. Hugo new site name of site dash F Y M L. Make sure you have latest version of Hugo greater than 0 0.83. So as we have already seen, we already have 0 0.97 installed on the computer. And after we have installed, after we have created a new site, we can go to step three. So choose either methods that you would like to do. It could either be method one, method two, or method three. So either methods will work. So I'd say the simplest way is to just git clone it. So let's do that. Go to terminal. So let, let me see where I am at. Okay, so I'm currently in the downloads folder inside the Hugo folder here. So what I will do now is I'll copy this. Or I just click here to copy. Go to terminal. And then just copy paste. Hit on enter. And then we have the themes folder. Okay, and see. Now we want to use Hugo to create a new site. So why don't I minimize this a bit? Make it bigger here. Close this. Okay. So what I'll do. Let me increase the size of the fonts here in the terminal bigger okay all right so there's a lot of information here because the folder name is quite long okay so i want to type in hugo or if you're using the hugo binary file you could do dot hugo okay or you could use hugo if it is installed in your computer Okay, so for those of you who don't have Hugo installed and you want to use the binary, you could go with dot slash Hugo. But make sure that the binary file is in your current working directory. Okay, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so from this point forward, I'm going to assume that you already have Hugo installed on your local computer and that you're just going to use Hugo like that with no dot slash in front. Okay, for simplicity. All right, so let's create the new site, Hugo, right here, new site. And then let's give it a name. Perhaps you want to call it W3 or even, you know, WW. Let me expand this a bit. And then dash F and then YAML, YML, enter. All right, and it works now. And so it mentions that you need to do a few more steps. You need to download the theme, which we had already done. So choose a theme from Go Hugo. Okay, because we have already done step one in that we have selected paper mod theme. You can add some contents to it and then look at the server. Okay, so we have already downloaded theme. Let's have a look at the list files here. So our themes is in here and we have created a new site here. So let's move the themes to the www folder. MV themes ww let's have a look again now you see that the themes folder is gone let's go inside the www directory and themes is here let's go into the themes paper mod let's go into paper mod all right so all of the theme files are in there Okay, so we are in the working directory of the Hugo website that we're going to create. So before proceeding further, let's launch a demo or a preview of the website. So you want to type in Hugo server dash D. Dash D is for displaying contents that are in draft mode. So if you don't have any contents in draft mode, you could just say Hugo server and it will work. But for those of you who have articles or blogs that are in draft mode, it will also be displayed. Okay, so we're going to type in Hugo server dash D, enter. And now the file is accessible for your view at this particular local host address. So let's copy that and go here. 
go to localhost with a port number of 1313. Okay, so there's no content, so you don't see anything here. So why don't we do this? I have already created some contents and I have already modified the config.yaml. So we're going to copy paste some of the contents that I have already done. So let's go to sandbox and then I already have a www folder in sandbox. And so why don't we do this? We're going to take a look at the YAML file that was just created and the YAML file that I have customized. Let's open up the Atom, which is a text editor or IDE. You could also use your favorite IDE like Visual Studio Code. Okay, so this is the one that I have created and let's see. And this is the YAML, oh. It has the same name, that's why. Let me close this first. Okay, so let me show you the contents. Okay, it's the same folder, sorry. Right here. Let me close that. So let's have a look at the config.yaml file that was created just a few moments ago. So you can see that there's barely only three lines of code here and the YAML file that I have is here. And the one that I have was actually copy pasted from here. Let me show you. So here in the installation wiki page, it provides you an example set of code that you could just copy for your own site. Okay, you could sub copy all of that here. And you could either go here to the top right hand corner and click on copy and then paste the contents into the config.yaml. And you could also copy some example content, which is in markdown language, copy it. And you want to put it into your content folder here. Let's see, archetypes post in the, in the archetypes post.md. Let's have a look at the contents of that. Post.md. So this is like a template for all of the posts, the header to use. I'll provide you all of the contents of this example site so that you could just use what I have already modified and then you could replace it with your own content, which will be a lot quicker for you to get started. So this is the config.yaml file that I have already customized, which was customized from the one on the wiki page. And I did a little extra customization as well, which might be useful to you. So what you could do here is simply replace all of my names with your own name. And here, replace my name here with your name. Replace the description about this website to be about you, your name here. And then make this content specific to you. Okay. So here I say that I create educational content on data science. So you could replace this with what you do. And some of the keywords to use, I use keywords like blog, portfolio, data science, and you could replace this with other keywords of your choice. Author here is my name and you could replace it with your name. So the default theme here is set to auto and you could change it to dark or light depending on your own preference. Here we let it be set as default for all of the other parameters like showing the breadcrumb, showing the reading time, etc. So I'll leave that as the default. And here we have the text to be my name and then we have the image which is the logo. I'll show you this in just a moment. So why don't we do that? So what I'll do here is I'll just essentially just change the working directory to the one that I have already created. And I'll provide you all of the files in a GitHub repo. And I'll provide you that link in the video description. Okay. So let's head over back here. Let me cancel this 
demo website and I'll go to my own customized version of the portfolio website. So where I am I right now? PWD. I'll go out. I'll go out. I think it's in documents. Sandbox. And in the www folder. And here. Let's have a look at the contents. If it is my content here. Yes, it is. Okay. So let's type in Hugo server dash D. And let's go to the local host again. Okay, so this is the customized version of my portfolio website, which you could easily customize. Okay. Let me show you side by side here. I'll put the code to the right. So title, this is the website of, right? So if you want to change your name here, I saved it to your name. Let's see what happens here. With it updates. It might be in the description of the website. Let me unchange it. Oh, it's right here. So the contents that you'll see here will go here. But the one on top here might be the one that goes to the meta description that goes to the search engine. So here you could replace this with your own name. Your name, right? If your name is John Doe, then you can say John Doe. Right, and it automatically updates to John Doe. Okay, so I'll leave it back to my name. Right, if I change contents here, it updates automatically. And notice that I've used the markdown syntax for making the text bold. I notice that I have my portfolio image here and it is in the folder images slash dp.png. So you could replace this with your own portfolio image. I notice here that the image title will be data professor. So if we hover it, all right. And so notice here that the buttons that are displayed are blog and projects, it, which is right here, the buttons that we're showing. I could add an S here and save it and this is updated to blogs. All right. So notice that this is for the profile mode and this is for the home info mode. So I just pasted the same content just in case I wanted to change it to the home info mode, but currently I'm in the profile mode. And I scroll down here, you'll notice some of the social icons are used here. So the first one is the YouTube social icon. And I put here name colon space YouTube. And then you could put in the URL of your YouTube. And then here we have name medium. And then you could and then you could put in the URL of your medium page. Same thing for Twitter and then full link to your Twitter account, LinkedIn, full link to your LinkedIn, full link to your LinkedIn account, GitHub, and then the link to the GitHub account, buy me a coffee, and then link to the buy me a coffee page. Here, you could also put in your Google Analytics code, your Bing or your Yandex code. Here, I just leave it at default. I'll leave it at default here. Menu. Okay, what links do you want to show at the top here? So here we have about, blog, and projects. So the weight here will show the ordering of the items on the menu. So if you want to show your blog to be the first one, then you want to make the weight to be one, which will be the first position. And let's say that you want to have your projects come in next, and then you want to have about to come in third. Then it becomes like that, and then you want to save it, and then the ordering will change. Now you have about at the far right. Blog and projects will be the first two. And you could add additional ones if you like as well like this. Let's see, what do we want to add? We have blogs. Okay, let me add S here. Blogs. Let's see, what do I want to add? How about illustrations? I've drawn some illustrations or infographics. Let's say infographics and then the name. 
would be info graphics you and then the URL could be info graphics and then the weight would be the fourth one or how about we have about to be the fourth one right there you go and so we have blog projects infographics let's make it a capital I there you go so we have blogs projects infographics and let's head over to the folder here so remember that we have the blogs so in the content folder we'll need to have this as blogs with the s and here we have about which corresponds to this folder and let's see projects corresponds to this folder infographics we don't already have a folder so i'll create a folder called infographics and then i'll need to populate the contents in here later on so, so let's have a look at about so you have index.md so when you click on the about link here you go to the index.md if you go if you click on the blog link here you go here to a summary page of the blog contents if you click on infographics then i'll have to create a index.md here and if you click on projects here you go to this folder so it will be a summary of projects one two three so why don't i copy the contents of about into the infographics and i'll modify this content let me do it now so that you can see so this was about so i'll just delete the contents here i also create and drawn infographics and illustrations to summarize the key concepts in data science machine learning and bioinformatics i'll call this infographics and here will be the infographics i'll leave everything else as default and as i mentioned if you don't want to show it you could have draft to be true like that but here we're just going to leave it as false so whenever i update the contents here i'll see the new content reflected here so i have already saved it and if i click on infographics then i go to this page okay and then i'll later on populate it with the respective infographic images let's click on about let's have a look at the contents there so let me show you the contents of about which is here right so all of them are written in markdown language so you could also paste in emojis you can make text bold and then you could add links to it like this so i added all of the social links and all of the researcher links related to my previous career as a professor in bioinformatics click on projects and it will be a summary of the contents in here let me show you it will be here projects one two three so it will show you the preview of projects one two three and notice that the title is here title and then the author will be the author which is myself and then the estimated reading time which is based on the amount of contents in here and so let's click on one of the projects and essentially the table of content would just be an abstract because we didn't really have any other contents provided here so what if we give it a structure you'll notice that it has this structure if you have one hash symbol it'll be a h1 heading so let me add another h1 heading here let's say full text article save it and this should be reflected reload it Oh, okay it's a different article probing the origins so let's see this one right here right so we have here full text article we add another heading if we click here table contents we have abstract and the full text article okay so that might be helpful 
So that you can just click here and you go to the full text article. Okay, so why don't I do that? I'll copy this. I'll save it here, close it, go to project two. I'll do the same. Put it here, save it. Go to project three, paste the heading, save it, and let's go back. Let's go back and let's see. Towards reproducible. Yeah, we have it. We have the full text article here. And if we click here, it'll go to the link of the article. So yeah, so we've written this review article in 2020. Let's close it. Oh, okay. Um, I just closed the website. Let's go back again. Okay. All right, so what else should we cover? How about here, the logo? So all of the images that you see here, the logo image and the profile image is actually in the static folder here. So covers would be for your articles. So the cover image for your blog or your projects. And if you do have a cover image, let me show you first. You go to contents, you go to blog, and in this article, what is bioinformatics? The cover is here, image. It will be the relative path to the image in the covers folder, which was in here, static. Covers and what is bioinformatics.jpg, which is here, okay? So let me show you blog, what is bioinformatics. So this is the cover image, okay, and the out, Description will be what is bioinformatics. And here we have a lot of headings that are provided, which was copied from the blog post that I published on Medium. And if you click on table of contents, you're going to see the table of contents shown here. Okay. Let's head over back. And now let's cover about the logo image. It's in static and it's in the images folder. Here we have two files. dp.png is the image of here. Coding.png is the image shown here. So I've actually modified this a bit from the one that I've downloaded. I think I got it from flaticons.com. So I'll post you the link to that in the video description. And so let me show you first, flaticon.com. And then you could search for, let's see, was it coding? Yeah, you could find, yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah, I'll post see the link to this in the video description as well. So it's free for a personal and commercial purpose. Okay. So you could, you know, find other icons that resonates with you. And then you could use it on your portfolio websites. Okay, and it's specified in your YAML file. So what else should we cover? I think that's all. So this is the basics for how you could create your portfolio website. So now you know already where to put your images, which is in static images folder. And you know where to create your content. Go to the content folder and then populate the folders here with your content, which is in Markdown. So this is the content for about, this is the contents for each of the blog posts that I have. So let me show you again. So these headers will be used by Hugo Framework to put in the title of the page, the slug, which will be the link to the web page of this article, and whether to show the table of contents. So we leave it at default. And then the rest, you could just copy from your GitHub readme.md if you already have one. And so all of the contents here will be in Markdown, which is really convenient to update and write. And upon updating it and saving it, you'll see the changes reflected in the preview of your website. OK, 
Okay, so now that we have already seen how we can create our own and also customize our own portfolio website, now let's have a look at how we could deploy it to the web or the internet or on the cloud. So first thing is I'll want to exit this server mode. We'll start fresh, clear. Let's look at the contents. And we have the public folder, which I'll remove right now because we're going to render it again and it will generate the public folder. Let me have a look. So there is no public folder. So the fun part comes here. You want to render your website. You could just type in Hugo dash D. And as mentioned already, dash D is for also deploying your draft versions. So if you don't have draft versions, you could just type in Hugo. Okay, or if you have draft version and you want it to be rendered as well, you want to add dash D. Okay, so let's go ahead with just using dash D here. Hugo dash D. Hit on enter. And then you will notice a summary table showing all of the rendered websites in Hugo. So we have here 22 pages, five static files, three aliases, one sitemap. Let's have a look. And you'll notice that you have the public folder here. Let's have a look inside the public folder. And we have all of the files that we need to upload to our remote website server or our remote web host server. So I'll show you that in just a moment. All right, and so let's have a look in the typical view of our folder here. So notice that we have already created the public, which is the version of the rendered websites. And so all of the images goes here. All of the cover images goes here. The contents blog goes here. The about page goes here. Infographics here. Projects will go here. And each project will have its own name. And remember, th these are the slug, S-L-U-G which will be the respective link. Like for example, you have about. Okay, so I already closed the preview and then you have like about and then you have, or how about projects and then you have here, slash ER pred, like that. ER pred. So it will be the relative path to your blog files here. Okay, so in the next segment of the tutorial, I'll show you how you could deploy all of these rendered websites from Hugo onto the web server or the web host. And now that we have already rendered the Hugo website files, let's now proceed to uploading it to the web host. So let's have our folder ready. It's in the public folder. So essentially, we're going to copy all of here into the web host server. Let's now head over to the web host server website. And so we're going to host our website on the Hostinger web hosting service. So let me log in. And I'll use my Google account to log in. So we're going to host it on the domain channon.tech and I'll head over to the hosting panel here, click on it. I'll now click on the manage part under the domain channon.tech, click on manage. Scroll down and then you'll see the files heading here. So apparently there's two versions, the normal version called file manager and the newer version, which has beta in parentheses. So let's go ahead and try it out using the typical file manager version. Okay. 
and you're going to see several folders here and the folder that we need to focus on is the public underscore html and so let's first go to the web domain chenin.tech and you're going to see that it currently has the default.php file here in the public HTML folder. And it's recommending that we should delete the file here and then we can replace it with our website files. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's delete this file and then replace it with the Hugo rendered files. Click into the public HTML. Double click on it. Or you could also click it on the side panel here as well, right here. And now we have default.php. So instead of deleting it, I'm going to rename it just in case, just in case we have it. So I'll rename it and add the .bak at the end. Click on rename. Let's have a look at the website again. Okay, now you're not going to see the website that is rendered normally because we have already renamed the extension from PHP to become .bak. So it's not recognizing it. So now I'm going to copy paste or actually I'm going to upload the contents of the Hugo rendered files in here. Let's see, can I drag and drop it here? Let's see if we could do that. Okay, I could drag and drop it. Can I drag and drop the entire folder? I think I can. Okay. So I just dragged and dropped and it's allowing me to review the files that is going to be uploaded. And you're going to see here that there are several folders indicated by the purple color folder icon. And then there's the individual files for HTML, XML, and TXT. So I'll go ahead and click on upload. And you're going to see that it's uploading one by one. So give it some time. So grab a cup of coffee or tea while waiting. And after you come back, it's probably going to be uploaded. One file failed to upload. Bad configuration. Okay. Index.xml. Let's see. Where is that? Oh, probably this one. So I'll have to maybe try to refresh this. Click on the side panel. Okay, and so now let's head over back to the Hostinger file manager and then upload our file. So I'll minimize this a bit and then we're going to upload the files in here. So let's start with the files outside. Let's try dragging it and dropping it. And then it allows you to review the file that you want to upload. So we're uploading 404.html, click on upload. Okay, so let's see index.html so the first few files just want to try out uploading it to make sure that it works normally index.xml okay so i'm uploading the files outside the folder okay so all files outside the folder are uploaded Let's click on the kind column here and then it resorts everything by the file type and folder type. Let's go ahead and upload all of the folders. Drag and drop. Click on upload. So give it some time. Okay, so it finished quite quickly. And all of the files are in here. Let's click back to the website, refresh it. Okay, so the logo is not appearing. Let's have a look. 
it should be in the images folder double click on it it's actually in here oh okay I think I know why I'll have to modify some file here one moment so let me let me delete everything except for the default.php I'll click on delete delete and so a point of note is that we need to modify one parameter and it's actually quite simple and I have overlooked that so let's do it now let's go up the folder outside the public folder so we want to delete the public folder here and then you want to open up the config.yaml file right here yourdomain.com so you want to replace this with the specific domain name of your website where it's going to be located or hosted so because I already have the domain name to be chenin.tech so I'll have to specify that here it's going to be chenin.tech save it and then we'll have to render it again so I'll fire up the terminal and I'll render it again dash D enter and it's finished exit it go back to the hostinger double click on public let's see the panel here let's try clicking on upload files select files can we select oh, okay we here if we do it like this we will have to select one by one so let's do it like before let's categorize it by type and let's upload all of the individual files here first And now the folders. Click on upload. So folders are indicated by the purple icon here. And the issue before was that when we did not modify the domain parameter, it's trying to find your domain.com slash the images. So there's no such files in that particular domain. And therefore, the solution is to correct that to become chenin.tech. And after doing so, it should be able to detect the image files hosted on chenin.tech web server, which is on the Hostinger web hosting services. So all of the files are uploaded here and the images are already in here. Let's have a look to double check, double click on it. All right, so coding.png and dp.png is right here. Go back here and let's refresh it. All right, and now it loads properly. So let's try out the light theme and dark theme mode. All right, it works perfectly. Let's click on the blog. Click on the first article. Let's try to click on the table of contents. Okay, it works. Click on read blog and all right, so the link works perfectly. Let's go back to the main page, click on projects. Click on the first article, click on table of contents. Click on full text article. All right, so it's working properly. Right click, open link new tab. Okay, article works perfectly. Click on infographics. All right, so as mentioned already, I can populate this with the relevant infographic images. Click on about. Okay, so all of the links inside the website works perfectly. And the great thing I like about the paper mod theme is that it's very clean and it does not distract the viewer from any fancy flashing images. And so, the viewers could choose to read it in light mode or dark mode. And there you go, a portfolio website that has a minimal appeal to it. And if you would like to create your own data science portfolio website, just follow along and 
all of the links to the resources mentioned in this video, along with the links to the hosting or web hosting services will be provided in the video description. And so feel free to drop your data science portfolio website URL in the comment section and share your data science portfolio website that you have created. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. If you reached this far, please drop a balloon emoji so that I know that you're the real one. And while you're at it, please like and subscribe and also turn on notifications so that you'll be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.